otherwise known as is not a new idea. People have always been loyal to their king or proud of their country. The modern form of nationalism emerged during the 1700s in the age of empires, and then it reached its peak during World War I. However, it became shamed across Europe after World War II and the Nazi extremism. However, it is once again on the rise across the Western world due to recent and current events. Nationalism, by definition, aims to put the nation at the top of the political organisation. It sees the nation state as the only legitimate form of government and therefore wishes to preserve it at all costs. Of course, nationalism is also synonymous with being proud of your country. However, some take this as being proud of their race and see other races as inferior. It is important to remember that this is not the view of all nationalists. UKIP, the party of the people, providing the alternative for Labour. Its prime goal, to leave the EU. However, in its 25th year, its existence is threatened. With its prime goal seemingly achieved, and many of its policies taken by the current government, many ask, why vote UKIP now? So our question today, what is UKIP? What do they stand for? And are they truly nationalistic? UKIP, Nigel Farage. What's the difference? Many say there isn't. This pub-going, beer-drinking man of the people has become the face of UKIP. He was a founding member back in 1991 and has then been leader from 2006 to 9, and then he was re-elected in 2010 to 2016. He is now the acting head after a leadership uh, mission. In 2015, they stood 624 candidates in the hopes of tapping into resentment of their mainstream political parties. In their manifesto, they put forward a lot of populist policies, such as increasing military spending, £3 billion pounds a year on extra, on extra NHS spending, an in-out referendum on Europe, tougher immigration controls, and lowering taxes. Despite their huge potential to infiltrate Parliament with a new party outlook, they were held back by the first past the post voting system, which meant that although they received 4 million votes, this only equated to 1 MP. Keeping in mind the SNP got a total vote count of 1.5 million and yet had 56 MPs. This has led to UKIP campaigning for proportional representation. However, all they gained little in 2015. In 2014, UKIP made big gains in the European Parliament gaining 27 seats and becoming the largest UK party in the European Parliament, with Labour now the second biggest. One of UKIP's policies is to make beer cheaper than ever. They would do this by cutting duty and taxes on traditional drought beers such as real ale, ciders and some lagers. UKIP would also allow landlords to write off against tax promotional costs for traditional beers through pub posters, beer masks and giveaways. And of course, Nigel Farage does like a beer. This shift in policies from the 2010 manifesto into UKIP's 2015 manifesto is often attributed to Farage and his leadership, which has taken them from fringe pressure group to modern day third largest party. But who is Farage? Has he always been against mainstream parties? And what kind of role did he have in founding UKIP and the subsequent growth of nationalism he has facilitated? Who is Nigel Farage? Oh, I didn't see you there. I hear you ask, who is Nigel Farage? Well, he was born in 1964 in Down. At the tender age of eight, you, the UK decided to join the EU. This was to change his life forever, as ever since he has campaigned to leave. Before founding UKIP, Farage was part of the Conservative Party until he joined UKIP. Many question Farage's nationalism and if it is in line with the country's nationalism. And even though he campaigns against, you know, immigrants coming in our country, his wife is indeed German. Did you know that Farage voted Green in 1989 because he agreed with their Eurosceptic policies? Wow, the 80s were weird. So, back to modern UK. Are they patriotic or actually nationalistic? Well, in several of the debates, Nigel Farage says that we are a patriotic party. And this is supported by the fact that they want to increase military spending. However, the fact that they want to leave the EU is also similar to the principle of a nation state, 
and that is the only form of legitimate government. The reluctance to say that they are nationalistic is perhaps because being nationalistic is um, with a tag of being racist and often ill-informed, so it is something they do not wish to identify themselves with. However, we must question, is this the old divisive race-based nationalism of the past, or is it the new, more inclusive nationalism? Who knows? So, is there a future for this party after we leave the EU? Will it simply crumble under infighting and lack of support, or will it rebrand itself and put pressure on new issues? Will it dissolve, or will it become stronger? Who knows? But all, anything, the only thing that is certain is that the brand of nationalism that has arose after the EU referendum will not dissipate any time soon.